there. I wish you a good, wonderful, pleasant morning, my friends. It's about um, 7.30 in the morning. I think it's a warm, nice, sunny, blue sky morning here in Vienna. And I think we're gonna have a nice little outdoor adventure today. An outdoor adventure today. So that's why I activated the camera and I thought I'd shoot a little bit of an outdoor vlog. The objective of this adventure is going to be to hit the 8C project from, from last year again. I'm sure some of you guys remember I made a few videos about this route. It's such an epic project. Uh, the thing is, it stays wet quite long after the winter. So uh, we're gonna check today if it is um, dry already. We've got a few dry days in a row now. And so I think there should be no problems actually there. The conditions should be quite good as well. I already checked the weather um, uh, and we still gotta make some uh, some preparations to make. I still gotta need a breakfast and I gotta get gotta get a breakfast in and we need to cook the pre-cook the post-workout meal as usual with our outdoor adventures. So I'm glad you're joining me on this day. It's gonna be a good day. I have it. I can feel it in my urine, I tell you this much. Uh, so, let's get started. Oh, welcome back to the Efficient Cuisine, my friends. It's been a long, 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 long time. Today we're gonna keep it simple, I think. We're gonna utilize these leftover uh, potatoes here, some red beet, some lentils, and two carrots. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do a curry, we're gonna make a curry with these things with the help of these two uh, wonderful spices here. We've got tandoori masala and garam masala. Uh, <clears throat> now first things first, we gotta wash the lentils. If you wanna, if you wanna have them a little bit more soft, even softer to your stomach, then you should actually soak them overnight, or you could soak them overnight. This is one of the advantages of these um, red lentils here. I'm just turning off the water here so that you can hear me. The advantage of these lentils is that they are washed very quickly and easily and also cooked very quickly and easily. So they are really practical for these kind of post-workout, pre-cooked post-workout meals uh, arrangement, so to say. Let's carefully transfer these little bad boys into the small pot. Now we can already mix in our spices. Make a good dose of tandoori masala. And we go with a little bit of garam masala as well, just like that. And we're gonna turn the heat to high, lid on top. All right, so next we gotta take care of our potatoes. We first gonna peel them and then we're gonna cut them into nice little cubes and add them to the uh, lentils because they take quite some time to cook as well. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, this kitchen is a true mess like usual. Please don't be uh, too intimidated. So we're gonna add this to the lentils. The lentil water is not even cooking yet. All right, so the potatoes are added. Lentil water is not even cooking yet, which is awesome because now the potatoes have just enough time to catch up to the lentils. Um, and they both actually need roughly the same time to cook. So next are the carrots. You see, if you're a slower chef and a slower cutter, you could also just as well prepare all the cut vegetables beforehand and uh, just turn on the heat when everything is in. I like to add everything step by step and turn the heat on from the beginning because it quickens up, it speeds up the cooking process overall quite significantly. You don't have to wait all the time until the pot warms up and stuff like that because it's already warm. So let's get in with the carrots and the final step. Some beautiful red beet there. And we're gonna take our peeler, get rid of the skin. Red beet going in. So now, as you can see, we're here in with everything. Um, it's not even cooking yet, which means I did a decent, uh, fast job on the cutting. Lid on top and just wait. 
Now while that's cooking, uh, we're gonna take care of the short-chained carbohydrates for the quick energy, for the more quick energy, which I'm gonna utilize for my breakfast and also as a during the workout fuel. And I'm gonna go with my one of my pretty standard recipes here. We've got some beautifully ripe bananas, another slice of the red beet, and I think roughly half an apple or stuff like that. some more for taking away and then I think curry should be ready soon mm -hmm. now that's what I'm talking about when it comes to perfectly cooked curries okay I would say this is finished let's pack this baby up mm. I think I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit because I don't want the heat of the freshly cooked curry to dissolve some of the plasticky stuff in there. There we go. And here we have the two items that we're gonna bring to the crack today. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this installment of the Efficient Cuisine. See you at the crack. For this part of the video I'm gonna quickly jump into voiceover mode. I was kind of debating what I should do. Should I talk about the route in detail, do a little technical analysis, a little strategy explanation like in the Migrania Profunda analysis and I figured well all of that is gonna take a lot of time because this line is really actually quite complex in its nature and yeah we, ha we already have this nice little uh, efficient cuisine segment in front of it and this would make the video like I don't know over 20 minutes long for sure so um, additionally as you might have guessed from the title I didn't send it that session so I think I'm gonna try to get a shot from the sand and use that as a foundation for a more elaborate analysis which I definitely plan to make because um, this line has so much detail to it and it's just so awesome uh, so the question still remains what I'm gonna be doing with this episode and I figured I'd just go with a bit of commentary on my attempts uh, during this session, how I felt, how the route felt and maybe a bit of uh, a sneak peek regarding the crux mechanics and all the good stuff. So there we go, as always I started with my uh, usual mobilizing routine, um, you saw me also a little bit of doing a little bit of a stretching there, I find it quite important actually for this route to be stretched really well in the legs, there are a couple of sequences which demand a really high mobility in the hips and in the leg department in general. So yeah, I got that one done and usually the first thing I do afterwards is I get on the route, um, boulder to the top, do all the, the single moves, get my draws in um, and do all that good stuff. And then I usually make a shorter break like for example 15 minutes or stuff like that or maximum 20 minutes and then I'm trying to make the first go and this is what you actually see here I'm currently in the first rest of the route this uh, just after the first few meters is actually not very necessary to rest for a very long time there because you don't really have a lot of um, destruction I would say in your forearms accumulated already and then it goes right into the first boulder now if I would have to grade the first boulder which is super weird super weird sequence I really have never seen something like this before but I would just grade it at about like 7b plus or something in a normal normal bouldering area um, I'm sure it would reach a 7b plus grading and the problem I had during this uh, attempt here, as you can see I fell, is that one hold of the rest, of this first rest here, actually is wet still. As you can see the sun is still in the frame, it's a bit right of me. So um, like one hour ago this was still in the sun and the sun, you know, when the sun shines on a wet crag it kind of um, pushes the water back into the rock, you know, it kind of dries the, um, the rock superficially so that the, the holes seem to be dry. But as soon as the sun goes out, it's getting cold again and the, the water comes back. It comes back to the surface and this happened with one of the holes of this first rest here and unfortunately I had to climb in the, in the first crux always with a little bit of a wet uh, left hand. 
And the left hand is really crucial because you really have to crank down this edge, which, which I just held there um, for these crux moves. Um, but yeah, despite that, on my third go of the day, uh, which this is, so the third go, including my checkout go, I managed to get over this f first bowler and up until this point I would say yeah one more big move into the um, big resting hold um, up until this point the route should be about like 8a plus at least I would say a super hard 8a plus or in I don't know I would I know a lot of areas where this would be already graded 8b um, so yeah, uh, I would say hard 80 plus or soft 8B and this second rest is really, really bad. Um, the problem is it's super steep. The resting hold is actually not that um, bad. It's kind of a jaggy, slopey thing, which is really sharp. So you don't need to have, you don't need to put a lot of forearm effort into it to hold it, but a lot of skin actually to hold it, which is kind of painful actually. Um, but anyway, uh, the, the rest is really bad and I'm always debating how long I should rest. Uh, this is something that relates also to the video that I actually did recently about Migrania Profunda. Um, this is one of these rests where I'm not sure how long I should rest, how much is actually destroying my pacing, you know, is destroying my rhythm. So yeah, anyway, I already entered the second crux and this is just another super crazy bowler. Here my left hand slipped off the crux hold. Um, I would say if I had to grade this bowler, it would be around, in a normal area, it would be around 7C or something, maybe soft 7C or hard 7B plus or something along those lines. Um, here again, this was my uh, third go, uh, excluding the uh, checkout go, so my fourth go of the day in total on the route and this time it already felt a little bit better I felt a little bit fresher a little bit um, accustomed to the moves again and I'm starting here into the second crux again which evolves around a super crazy shoulder Gaston move as you can see here I'm grabbing the, uh, sh the, the crux hold with my left hand and then you got your you gotta get your right foot really high and make this kind of drop knee like Gaston crossover into a super bad pinch for the right hand. And here, I already had it, but I didn't have it perfectly. The problem is that uh, it really matters to get this um, edge perfectly, this pinch perfectly, to be able to make the next move. And this was my uh, fourth attempt, respectively my, my five, my fifth attempt of the day, including the checkout go. And this was actually a really, really close go. Man, I already had the, I, I got the, I got the the pinch with the right hand this time kinda well but I was so pumped already so now getting into the crux move again and here I'm able to sort my fingers in get my left foot up and try to uh, make the next move which is super hard actually as well um, but yeah I fell down there so feels really good at this point my skin was ruined so I couldn't make any more attempts but this felt pretty pretty nice I'm sure if the root gets fully dried up um, it should be actually possible um, what I did afterwards is I, I tried the second bowler a couple of more times. I trained on it, so to say, make three, four more goes, you know, trying to climb it through, um, going back down and trying it again. And so, you know, you want to train, you want to get your crux moves in to have them really down solidly for the next time you go there. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to trying it again. I hope you enjoyed this little update on how it's going on the Big Root project. I'm feeling stronger than ever before on it, but yeah, I still need to get it dry 100% and I need a little bit more acclimatization, I guess, because of course I didn't try it for a long time now and I lost a bit of that. But yeah, apart from that, it feels really great. I'll see you soon. Close. So close. Cultivate your